Hello everybody, it's Decaf here with a video tutorial about how to use Blender. Uh, this is going to be the first of many videos, hopefully in a nice long series, explaining how to use Blender to both make aircraft and paint aircraft and other models for YS Flight. Uh, I'm going to start off this video and this series by giving you the basics uh, of Blender. I'm not going to go into any specific airplane modeling techniques or anything like that, but this is just going to show you how to start to use Blender. Uh, so this is how I first see Blender when I start my when I started up. Um, it'll be a little bit different from what you see because there is this coordinate system right here, this X, Y, and Z um, that is physically present in your model. You just can't see it. Uh, so we have the default cube. We have, in my case, this coordinate system. We have a light source right here, and we have a camera right here. This camera and light source, we really don't use at any point in time. Um, I initially just start off by getting rid of it. So in order to get rid of it, I have to select it and then delete it. So when we select things, you want to use the right mouse button to click on something. That'll turn it pink. You'll notice that there is now these three, these two arrows and this blue spot here. This is really an arrow coming up at us that we can only really see uh, when we start spinning things around. Uh, so if I want to select multiple items, I'll hold shift and then select another item. Now, say I selected the wrong thing and I accidentally selected uh, part of my airplane. I didn't want to get rid of that. Uh, what you can either do is control Z to undo that. Or if I go back here with control Y, I can go back and redo something. Or I can just press A to deselect everything. A toggles between selecting all and unselecting all. So if you only have a couple things selected and then press A, it'll toggle back to nothing is selected. So let's go ahead and delete these two. Uh, say I had a whole bunch of items and I didn't really want to click on them. What I can do is do, use a loop uh, select by holding down control oops, and the left mouse button. There we go. That selects all of the things that are inside this loop. Now, if you'll notice, I have a straight line in between where I first clicked and my mouse right now. And wherever I drag my mouse, there is now a nice curved surface. So by pressing the X button, that brings up the erase dialog. Uh, you, there's no button that you can press in Blender that'll automatically delete something. You have to confirm that you want to delete it. So either press return here or click and that'll get rid of those two things. So now all we're left with is our cube and our coordinate system, at least for me. You'll just be left with your cube. Now one thing you should notice here is this grid that we are on. Uh, I'm zooming in by scrolling up and down my mouse wheel, scrolling up to zoom in, scrolling down to zoom out. And you can see that this cube goes right between these two thick lines on the grid. What this grid represents is one unit. And in case of YS Flight, one unit is modding, is, sorry, one meter for the export scripts. So from this green line here to this first dark line, that is one meter. And each of these little tiny boxes here are, one, are 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters. So this is a very good way to get some scale when you're trying to make something. Uh, so let's uh, try rotating this. Um, if you click your middle mouse button and drag, you can see that we can rotate all around. And you'll see the shading changing on the three surfaces. Now this cube is not gray. It's gray because we are in a certain mode. Blender has different modes that allows you to do different things. Right now we are in what's called object mode, which allows us to select objects within Blender and move them, manipulate them, do what we want with them. So to change our modes, we have this handy uh, thing right here. But in order to change modes, we have to have something selected. So let's select our cube here. Now notice that we have all three of these arrows. We have the green going in the Y direction, the red going in the X direction, and the blue going in the Z direction, right here. We can move this cube 
just by clicking and dragging on one of these arrows. And it's only going to move it in the axis direction that we've selected. So if I click on the red arrow, it's only going to move this object in the X direction. This function is universal throughout all the different uh, tools that I'm going to be showing you. Uh, and it has to do with the selection mode that we have down here. Right here you can see we have a couple of different things. Uh, right now we have this triangle, which is called the Translate Manipulator Mode. We can also select a Rotate Manipulator Mode, and we can rotate this item, this object, on different axes just by clicking and dragging on the color line. So what this does is the green line here will rotate around the y-axis and the red line will rotate around the x-axis and so on for the blue. So this is an interesting way to do this, but I find that by clicking and dragging I get very inaccurate results. So I'm going to go back here to the default setup. There we go. And I'm going to go back into the translate mode because this is the mode I like to be in the most. What I'm going to do now is press the N button. And this brings up the transform properties window. It shows you right here in the top left what you have selected. So right now I have this cube selected and its name is cube. This right window up here doesn't have anything uh, selected. That is the parent object window. So if we're dealing with animations, you're going to see whatever this is parented to there. I'll talk about that in a later video. Now we have a couple of uh, things here with location, X, Y, and Z, rotation in the X, Y, and Z, and some scaling functions. So if I play around with this, I can type in a number here, like 3, and it'll net, or 30, <laughs> and it'll be scaled 30 times in the Y direction. I could also drag here, and you'll see my X coordinate changing as I drag this out. You should see that this is only going, this is about 6.1 meters, so let's go out. Here's 6 meters there, 6.1. It's going right to the center of this object. So whenever you define a uh, location or a rotation, it's always going to be going about the object center. You can define that, and I'll show you how to do that later, but that's a very important thing to know. So let's go back to zero. Uh, one of the nice things you can do in this window is type in basic math functions. So I can have 1 plus 1, and it'll go out to 2. It's a very handy thing when you're trying to do uh, some precise things. So let's uh, go back to the mode uh, train of thought that I was on earlier. Um, moving this around is great and all, but what if we want to change its shape? Well, to do that, we're going to have to go into the edit mode. The edit mode allows us to manipulate uh, three different things. We can manipulate the vertices, which are these little points here. We can manipulate edges, which are the lines. Or we can manipulate faces, which are the polygons that make up this object. Now, for this version of Blender and for Wise Flight, faces cannot be more than four sided. So they could be any type of polygon, four sides, or three. Uh, it's just the way YS Flight reads the polygons. And it keeps you from making really, really weird shapes and not getting the right curves that you want. So uh, by, I can change the modes right here by just going back and forth and clicking. And you'll notice I started out with this face mode here, just right here, and I had this top face selected. But if I switched over to the edge mode, all these edges are now selected, which is great. Uh, if I go back to the vertice mode, all these vertexes are selected. So you can go back and forth between them. Uh, if I only had two of these uh, vertices selected and went to the face mode, no faces are selected because I didn't select enough vertices to create a face. So if I wanted to view this with some see-through, that's great. The default is it's going to do that. But if I only want to see the sides that are going to be facing me, I'm going to want to hit this Occlude Background Geometry. But basically, that hides anything that is not visible if you were looking at this cube in real life. Okay. So let's uh, go and take a look at another feature that you're going to want to 
fiddle around with, and that is with the different view modes or the draw types. There are three major ones that I use. There's textured, solid, and wireframe. Right now we're on solid, and what that does is helps us see the shading that is actually going to be present in our model. Uh, even without the light source, which is good that we don't have the light source here anymore, uh, we can still see the shading. You'll especially notice this uh, when you start dealing with curves and seeing how smooth they look. For example, the your wing, how smooth does that look uh, as you go from the leading edge and going over the top. Uh, I use the textured mode here to see the color. Right now this is only white. This cube is only white. There's no other color in it. It's in default white, which is absolute white on your RGB scale. Uh, and the final mode that I use is wireframe. I really only use this if I have a lot of things in the way and I'm trying to get at something in the very center. So for example, if this cube was so large that I couldn't see this coordinate system in the middle, I would go into wireframe mode and then try to select that. Now, notice how I couldn't select that. I'm trying to click on it there, but all I'm doing is selecting the cube faces. That's because I am still in edit mode. In edit mode, I can only edit the object that I selected in object mode. So if I want to go back and go back to object mode, notice how my cube is still selected in pink here. If I want to change that and go select my coordinate system here, I have to do that in object mode. I can't do that in any other mode. <laughs> well, let's say you want to go back and forth between object mode and edit mode really quickly, rather than go back here and fiddle. If you press tab, that'll get you back into edit mode. And notice that it started out by selecting this face over here. When you go back into edit mode, it remembers what your last condition was. So if I had half the model selected, and I went to object mode and did a couple things then came back to edit mode, it would still have half of the faces or half of the model selected, which is a very handy thing. So let's uh, go into sh textured mode to look at the colors, and let's go to vertex paint mode. This is the third uh, mode that you use the most in YS Flight Modding, and this is where you go to actually paint the model. So to change the colors, you click on this box down here. It'll always show you the current color that it is ready to paint. And let's make this a nice purple. You can click on some of these default colors over here to set your uh, next color that you're trying to work on in this uh, box right here to the desired color. This box below is the old color. So if you want to activate this nice new color, you click on that, double click on that, and it'll now say, okay, you want purple now. So if I want to paint the surfaces, uh, all I have to do is hit the set V color button down below. Now my entire cube is pink. Well, I didn't want that. Well, let's say I only wanted to do one face. Well, let's undo with control Z. And let's get into the face mode of vertex paint. By pressing the F button, now we can see the different surfaces. So I can right click on a surface or a couple surfaces here. Or if I didn't want to shift click, I could control click. Nope, oh, that's not available here. Can't do that. You can only right click and shift right click in vertex paint mode. All right. So let's set those colors. Now you notice that these objects are still uh, highlighted. I can deselect them by pressing A. And now I have a half purple, half white cube. So let's say this is my absolute perfect airplane model. I did 100 hours of work on this. Uh, well, how do I save it? By going up here to the file menu, I can come down here to save or save as and it brings up this save dialog. Now this window here is the same if you're opening a file, importing or exporting a file. It's going to come up with this uh, window here. And it's really just from this uh, line up. So up here we have the file path that we're going to save to. And on my Mac, 
um, this is unique there. Uh, this is where you import your file name for your model. And these are all the files within the folder that you have selected. You can see some of my 7, um, 27 work here, trying to get that working. <laughs> but let's say we don't want to save into this folder. We want to save into another one. Well, let's go back. Well, how do we do that? There's no back button here. Well, this um, option right here with the two dots there, that is our back button. That allows us to go up one file. So now we can see here my 727 folder there. And you can see some of my other work here, the CRJs, the 737s, and the F-18s down here. So I'm not going to save, but you can save wherever you want. You can go into another folder just by clicking on it, saving in here. And then you'd hit save as or save. And you might have to click that twice because it'll have to, number one, confirm your file name and number two, confirm where you're going. So I'm not going to save this. I'm just going to hit cancel. And after you save, you'll come back to this view. So I hope that was uh, helpful. Um, I'm going to do some more uh, tutorials so you can get some more than the bare bones basics. I'll introduce some more tools, um, how to move things, and uh, really go over some more uh, details. So if you have any questions, um, I'll be glad to answer them. Put them in the comments section down below. I'll get to them as soon as possible. Happy modding.